My name is Jason Barr. I'm the Director of Clinical Services and Program Development at the Canadian Mental Health Association, Halton Region Branch. My name is Birpreet Sani. I work as a health promoter at the region of Peel. My name is Richard Wells. I'm a staff physician at Sunnybrook Health Science Centre and the Odette Cancer Centre. The inspiration uh, for working in mental health uh, came to me while I was taking uh, the nursing program actually. So um, I got into um, the field, I was taking nursing, really liked uh, my clinical placements in the mental health field and uh, from there grew into community mental health and then um, to the point where I started um, in the management field and um, but wanted to continue in the mental health direction and uh, brought me to where I am now. Getting into medicine for me was a process that had a sequence of inspirations. The first thing that made me think about getting into medical school uh, was way back when I was an undergraduate. I was really interested in biology and medicine seemed to be the most challenging and interesting thing that you could do if you're interested in biology. But that was only the beginning. Uh, my inspiration changed as time went on. I became inspired by thinking about particular diseases as I went through medical school. But what's the most important and most enduring inspiration that I've had uh, has been getting to know people at their very most vulnerable and most frightened. When, when patients come in and they really need help. And I found that that experience uh, and that opportunity has been extremely inspiring and, and really very potent. At some point in our lives we all wonder, what do I want to do when I grow up? I face the same dilemma, but I was certain about one thing. I wanted to do something with a sense of purpose. I loved science, but not just basic science. I started developing interest towards application of science to healthcare. I took some courses that discussed the underlying causes for ill health which included social and economic factors that influence our health. And I made my mind that I wanted to work towards reducing health disparities and reforming healthcare delivery. Public health just seemed like a perfect fit for me. Health promoters at the region of Peel in general um, are involved in conducting research, creating health education material, raising awareness about public health issues, advocating for policies that have a positive population health impact. They're also involved in developing, implementing, and evaluating public health programs. That's a funny question. The short answer is no, I can't, because there really isn't a typical day. Every day starts out the same way. I come in and then it explodes, and it explodes in a different direction every day. No two days are alike. So yesterday, Monday, I have my, my big clinic, came into the clinic, and I had a set of patients to see. Now, every Monday I have a clinic, every Monday I'm seeing patients, but that's a very superficial similarity. Really, what happens is, whatever happens. So first patient has certain needs, certain things have happened, and you just have to follow those. say that um, as far as conflict mediation, um, other skills like um, you know planning, um, program development, uh, quality assurance as well, those are definitely transferable skills that I can use in other fields as well. Well, oftentimes you do have um, people who work in the health field who have you know a health background and work in direct service. Um, oftentimes, um, people will upgrade their education to include, um, you know, man management courses, whether it's an MBA or, um, you know, health health management programs um, of that sort. Um, also, some finance pieces could also help with uh, with education, um, and um, but it could be a variety of different things, and I think that. Um, being able to acquire those transferable skills, you know, is important, you know, as you're, um, you're working in this field.
I think we're looking for somebody in, in the mental health field, we're looking for somebody who has an open mind, who is um, wanting you know, to be in it for the right reason, to, to have somebody who um, wants to help um, others in their journey towards recovery, as well as um, you know, playing that positive role in somebody's life when they're wanting to get help. I see a lot of people who are medical students or nurses or nursing students or uh, doctors in training uh, and what everyone has is smarts. Everyone's smart, everyone's learning, everyone's got great book learning. But I think really what sets a good doctor, a good nurse apart isn't book learning, although you have to have that, but everyone has to have that, it's just expected. Really the thing that I think is most important is understanding what patients are experiencing. And so I guess, I guess really that's empathy. But for me, it's, it's even more simple than that. The, for me, the essence of it is the most important thing that you can say in your day to anyone you're working with is, yes, of course I have time. Because, you know, we're all busy, everyone's busy, everyone's got a ton of things to do, everyone needs to get out of here to get home to the kids and have dinner. But that can never be evident um, when you're dealing with a patient. If you're dealing with a patient, the patient has to be the most important thing in the world. In any other sector, uh, technology has significantly affected public health. For instance, social media is increasingly being used to send updates regarding emergencies and outbreaks. We are using geographic information systems, also known as GIS, for risk mapping. Internet is being increasingly used for online surveillance of infections. And also, Video conferencing and teleconferencing is becoming increasingly popular for uh, communicating with specialists, thereby minimizing the need for face-to-face -face interactions. So technology has changed things enormously, even just during the scope of my career, which is going back quite a few years. But I can remember when I started working on the ward seeing patients, we had patients' charts in big blue plastic binders, three ring binders, and bits of paper stuck in, and if you needed to order medication, you'd hand write all the medication. And um, if you needed to order blood tests, there'd be paper requisitions. Here's the requisition for a blood count. Here's the requisition to check kidney function. Everything was on bits of paper. And that's all we knew. We thought that was perfect. And if there was something that we needed to know about the patient, we knew we should be able to find it in the chart. If we couldn't find it in the chart, then we look around in various trays scattered around the, the ward station. And if we couldn't find it there, we'd walk down to the, to the lab, for example, and see if they still had the bit of paper there. Now, it's obvious now, now that we know better, that that's a crazy system. It's a complete setup for medical error. So that had to change, fine. Uh, but the, the extent to which it's changed and, and the speed that it's changed at uh, is really quite shocking. Technology hasn't really decreased the demand for workers. I, will, I would say this, is people still need that interaction. So oftentimes, yes indeed, you can, for example, you could have a counselor who, who provides counseling to you via teleconference or, or telephone. With that said, for the most part, people want that interaction and that you know, that face-to-face -face, um, contact or interaction, if you will. And you know, oftentimes, you know, that is what's needed. Uh, um, oftentimes, people with mental illness or addiction issues uh, are socially isolated, so getting them out of you know their homes and into the community and meeting people where you know they feel comfortable, whether it's a coffee shop or you know um, you know a different meeting area, or e whether it's at um, the local Canadian Mental Health Association, um, you know getting them out into the community is a positive thing as well. I 
think healthcare is kind of a special case when it comes to thinking about globalization. And the reason for that is the professional aspects of healthcare. So uh, the, the College of Nurses, the College of Physicians, uh, tend to keep fairly tight regulatory control over who practices those pro professions in Ontario. So th there's a little bit of a um, slightly a closed door policy. It's really quite hard, for example, for someone to do medical training in another country and come to Canada and just pick up as a, as a specialist. Uh, there's a, a long and pretty difficult process that you have to go through with the College of Physicians to, um, to even get a license to practice and it involves a, a long time practicing under supervision. Some physicians are even required to go back and repeat some of their training. So there's a huge uh, disincentive to do that, uh, which is, uh, you can see that it's a, uh, something that you need to have. You need to have control over who's coming into the province and doing this sort of work. But on the other hand, it's something that may drive away some very highly qualified, highly motivated individuals. I think there'll be a lot more collaboration with other sectors and there will be incorporation of technology to address complex health problems more effectively and efficiently. Well, I think as stigma uh, continues to decrease, I think that people will become more open and I think that you will see a lot more people as far as numbers um, wanting to access services. So getting that conversation going and continuing um, is, is a, you know, of vital importance. I also think that technology will continue um, to evolve and so whereas, um, for example, crisis line um, numbers will probably turn into, you know, um, texting and, um, and just to, to, um, to meet that new demographic, right, those millennials. I guess it's a, a cliche to say that the only constant thing is change. And that certainly applies to healthcare, as I've seen it looking back over the past two decades. If anything, the pace of change is increasing. I think the biggest change that I see now is that whereas medicine, healthcare, was formerly really dominated by physicians, that is becoming less and less true every year. And I guess that's kind of a sad thing for physicians. You know, we, we used to have a more powerful role than we do now. But I don't think it's a bad thing. And it's certainly a good thing because it uh, opens doors for people in other professions. The nursing prof profession for sure, but not only nursing. So now in healthcare, we recognize that not only medicine and nursing, but also allied health professions, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, dietitian, social work, all of these professional components are really important. All, all have voices. One of the ways of standing out is to actually um, be a trailblazer. Um, being someone who can actually voice their opinion and is not afraid to do so is of vital importance. Oftentimes, uh, and I think this can probably be for other professions as well, and I believe that it can be, where people aren't interested necessarily in hearing you know, the same opinions over and over again. People want to hear you know, different things and outside of the box thinking and you know, people who are innovative and you know, have a, you know, aren't afraid of sharing their opinions. I think networking is the key. It is very important to network with people and not just your own professional background, but also with people with different expertise because it helps us to understand their perspective and be more creative. The advice I'd give is you have to think that your application is going to be in a pile of hundreds of applications, thousands of applications. What is going to make your application stand out why should the admissions committee select you? So you have to make yourself a little bit different. And everyone, everyone knows 
that every person is individual and unique. But you have to find a way to show just how special you are to people who don't know you, who just know you as a, a folder with some pages in it. And so think about that. What's going to make me stand out? And everyone's different. Maybe you're a fantastic competitive swimmer. Okay, go for it, do it. And not only compete, but also do things around it. Not only swim, but teach, coach, become a lifeguard, become a lifesaver, get qualifications. Do things that make you stand out as a person who is capable and special and talented and a person who cares. That's the sort of thing. Everyone, every resume, every application in that huge pile of applications is going to show a fantastic academic record. You have to have that just to get through the door to be considered. What you're going to have to focus on is that extra mile. What's the special stuff about you that's going to make your application stand out? So volunteer, work hard, work in the community, do things with people. And that's what I recommend.